Welcome to Sister Wives Season 2, Episode 4, Carving into Polygamy Rewatch. The most boringest Halloween ever. I know that a lot of people complain that our, our recaps, some of these are shorter than others because some of the episodes, like this one, is only 21 minutes. And even if we talk as long as the episode, which we often do, that still will probably be only like 24 minutes max. But I'm going to tell you a, a secret. If you want longer, more of us, go below to our playlist. You can turn on a playlist and you will hear hours upon hours upon hours of us talking endlessly. So that's a really good substitute because uh, we can't do much more about extending these, uh, these episodes. We are now coming to you on Thursdays. I hope you made the jump with us. If you are not watching Seeking Sister Wife, which will either start in a few days if you're watching this on Patreon no. or oh, okay. started like a week and a half ago or something if you're watching on YouTube, please consider joining us because John is already right on the edge of refusing to do it. No, Seeking Sister Wife. Oh, Seeking seek, Brother oh. Husband. I'm sorry. Ooh, did I say it wrong? You did. Seeking Brother Husband. I'm so sorry. I was so confused. Um, but John is already on the edge of not wanting to do it. On the edge. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do it. But if a lot of people like us and watching that, then I guess I have no choice. And? I mean, we have a furnace to pay off. We have a furnace to pay off. And now <laughs> we have potentially a well pump to fill <sighs> off. Because over the weekend... Um, our well controller just turned off. Yeah, John's like, we're not getting much water into our cistern. So we have a, for those who grew up like us... And not, like, where you just turn the dial and the city provided water, we now have, we've now lived in many houses that have a well. And this one has a well that feeds a cistern, and the cistern feeds the house, and the well stopped feeding the cistern. It's all been theoretical anyway. It's all been very theoretical. It has, it has not worked more often than it has worked for us, which is not ideal for a home that wants to have running water. I would say. I mean, maybe we were just spoiled city kids. <laughs> but I always dreamed when I grew up of many things, and that usually included running water. Yeah. Electricity, running water, internet, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, over the weekend, it, it, John goes, the lights aren't on on the well controller. And we're like, oh, so we go check it. And the, the, the fuse has flipped. So we're like, oh, easy fix. We flip it back. It goes, eh. Snap. And we're like, oh, that's not great. So it's drawing way too many amps, so something is very wrong. Significantly wrong. I'm just gonna make sure that it's not that I'm not getting notices from the well people saying they're on their way out. Um, so anyway, they came out this morning. The guy's like, ah, I think it's your well pump, but since your well is in the middle of a, a field, a field, well, a field is really calling it generously. Right now, it would call it a swamp or a mud pit. He's like, we'll come back later when we have a truck that has tires, because of course it's snowing Chains. out. Chains. I'm sorry. I'm really screwing this up. So they're going to come back later on. It's snowing. It snowed like four inches, but it's been, the snow all melted last week, so everything is just pure mush. It is that time between winter and spring when it's just mud season. Yeah, so it, I don't know if this is common everywhere. M really. Much like between fall and winter. Yeah, but we, for the last 10 years, we've lived in rural communities that have lived near ski places. And a lot of ski places, major ski towns, have mud season. And they'll, like, restaurants will close. Like in Steamboat Springs, restaurants would close during mud seasons. They would do winter tourist season, summer tourist season, and then they would close during mud season or do severely reduced hours. Um, I feel like As in, like, they have stuff lunch. posted on the Internet. So when you spend two hours to get there... And you, you figure they, they posted the right hours on the internet? No. Nope. You were You'd wrong. You'd be wrong. And I feel like sometimes they would only do dinner or they would only do lunch. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe dinner? Whatever one we didn't come for. <laughs> Probably dinner. But, uh, yeah, they have mud season. So, and I always said, like, I wouldn't be a snowbird or a sunbird. Like, where people... I would be a mudbird. Like, we would get something. I would be here for Not winter and purpose. summer. And then I would go somewhere else when it was muddy season. Yes. That's yes. what I would do. So spring and spring and winter, I'd like. I, like maybe Flagstaff. Maybe maybe yeah. there's something for sale around. I don't know Coyote Pass. Maybe maybe there's some unincorporated land co covered in prairie plague. <laughs> um, no, but anyway, so so it's mud season here. So our well. So now our so John's truck work work ranch truck took a took a 
disastrous turn last fall. That was the four wheel drive system, the rear main seal, the rear the rear uh, window, the rear window, the air conditioning, the AC, all of it. So we got that repaired, and then we got the furnace, which broke twice before we had to get a new one. Um, and then now it looks like our well is redoing. Anyway, the point is we will be watching brother, bro, uh, brother, husband, wife, seeking brother, husband. We will. I might be peer pressuring John into something else if I think we can make money I'm on it. I'm not doing an OnlyFans, honey. I know. Well, I don't know that that is really. You might be okay. I don't know that I would be much of a draw for an OnlyFans. I don't. Wouldn't know. Uh. Yeah, although we did see the gal on TikTok who was saying she's making 300000 on OnlyFans a month. And I was like, exactly how strongly do I feel <laughs> about nudity? Is there much of a market for middle-aged, slightly round and squishy middle-aged wives? I don't know. I mean... You know, 300000 I mean... Morals, 350000 a month. <laughs> things I feel comfortable with. I mean, I don't know. I'm like, huh. I really, that really soothed my morals. <laughs> anyway, this is a really boring episode. Nothing happens. They, they're going to celebrate Halloween. And all I kept thinking about was the comparison between this Halloween and the COVID Halloween that we saw where they, it was just you Robin's just kids. Just Robin's kids. and Just Robin's them. kids. And I feel like... I feel like there was a comment from Christine that said that they didn't really celebrate Halloween a lot before. I, I, I can't remember. Don't pay that much attention. And I'm not going to watch it. But anyway, they, they, they're going to go have pizza at the park, which was a little confusing to me because I felt like, why don't they just have pizza at the house? But whatever, they had pizza at the park. Then they went to the Evans Family Farm, which they mentioned really repeatedly. So I was like, oh, I know someone who did a trade in kind. Um, or doors are just related. I, I bet you they got free admission and free pumpkins. That's That would be my guess because we mentioned it before, but when John and I worked on a reality show, one of the jobs that I did as an executive producer, I know, don't be too impressed. Don't be impressed. Don't be impressed at all. If I, if I told you the whole story, sorry, I just wanted to. Uh, if I told you the whole story, you would be like, man, you are such a sucker. Yeah. What yep. a loser! Because it costs us time, money, energy, part of our soul, much of my self-esteem. In exchange, I got debt. Like, it did not work out well for me. But what, as one of my jobs as an executive producer, we talked a lot to pe a, a lot of people about potentially uh, being sponsors for the show. And I will tell you that everyone, almost everyone's like, yeah, I'd love to be a sponsor. You know, I'd love to be up to appear on the show. We'll give you stuff. And we're like, well, what we really need is cash. And they're like, oh, I'm a big fan of cash, too. I don't think we can give you that, but we can give you some bows. We can get, because we're doing archery shows. Yeah, because top archers, you know what they want. We can loan, yeah. Somebody's crappy entry-level bow. Yeah, like, I, I think we talked to Polaris when we went to the SHOT Show to talk to people. We went to the SHOT Show, which is a big... It's mostly guns, but it's like all outdoor. This is this is why I laugh when Cody says I work part of the outdoor industry because that's how they refer to themselves: outdoor industry when they mean guns. Anybody can buy a table at these shows. Yeah, and it's it's enormous. And apparently, anybody does. Thousands and thousands. It was something like if you walked every aisle, it'd be thirteen miles or something like that. And I I think we did that, but we met with a bunch of companies about sponsoring the show, like things like Polaris, who makes side by sides and four wheelers, and they were like. Oh yeah, we could for like a fifty percent share. We'll we'll loan you like two Polarises, and we're like, we can make people walk. <laughs> I think it was something like that. I could have the wrong. It could have been Gator. It could have been any other company. It was so long ago. It was like nine years ago that, that happened. Um, and everyone was like, hey, yeah, we'll give you stuff. We can like. Um, I think we talked to the people. It was a binocular company. Could have been Leica. It could have been. Could have even been. I thought it was Loophole. It could have been Loophole. Um, sorry, John John told me not to do something and now I can't think. My brain just stopped. No, but one of those companies were like, oh yeah, we'll give you a spotting scope for the, the host, me, to use. And with prominent branding, we'll give you two pair of binoculars. And we're like, like, thank you. We've got our own. Thank you. But I actually already own. <laughs> we work on a ranch. We run 
hunters like, for money. Like, we have this stuff. Yeah. Like, like, I own binoculars, and I own a spotty scope, because I'm an archer. I own those things. Like, I wouldn't mind another one, but then we can't take that in place of actual money. So, the point being that it's it's really easy, usually, to get trade in kind, which is like, instead of giving you $5,000, we'll give you $5,000 worth of retail product. And, uh, and then... How about you go sell it on eBay and give us the money? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could just sell it on uh, eBay. That wouldn't have been ethical. Um, and I, you know what I was thinking of the other day? I totally forgot that that is not the only TV show I've worked on. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. What were you thinking of? Well, you did CSI and... Yeah. I did a uh, Discovery show. I was a archery... The, the other ones actually paid. Yeah, that's true. I got like I got like a thousand bucks uh, for like five minutes of help on CSI. We did Vanity Fair. I did a Vanity So what happened was back when I was an archer, CSI Miami got a bow from Martin, and they were like, "Oh, you know, do you know uh, archery expert or something?" And they're like, "Yeah, Nikki." Well, I couldn't do it, so my friend Tara uh, did it because I had a conflict. But then they called her again later, and she didn't have some of the equipment she needed, so we went and did it together. And so on CSI Miami, there's two archery episodes. I can only find one of them. I was Googling last night to try to find footage of it. But um, where a bow and arrow was involved in the mystery. And the second one is the one that I went and did. And um, the gal, the little blonde one who was like the gun expert and she had an accent, a really strong like Louisiana accent, she had just come back from her pregnancy leave. And I remember because she was, you know, she was post-pregnancy probably six, eight weeks, and so she's, most women's bodies still have some evidence of the pregnancy. We're not all like Heidi Klum or those ones who like immediately are doing swimsuit covers. I, as evidenced by the fact that my son is six, I still have some, you're gorgeous. I still have some pregnant, um, some evidence of my pregnancy. I may, I'm going to eventually see if I can lose the weight. Actually, I've lost all the pregnancy weight twice and then immediately gained it back. They were like, nope, nope. We like the work we've done here. We're restoring it back to post-sun condition. Um, but yeah, so I did that. That was super fun. But yeah, it was like a th we went there first thing in the morning. She was super nice. She was like, babies are awesome. You guys should get on it right away. Because both um, her and I were newlyweds at the time. My friend Tara and I were newlyweds. And so she's like, and the baby was there. And she had like a full-time. It was funny because she had a full-time nanny who was actually a pediatric nurse. Because she's like, when I was in the hospital, I just liked the nurse so much that I hired her to be a full-time nanny. And I was like, man, to be on TV full-time, that's the life I want. <laughs> I'm on YouTube almost full-time. but You're not definitely not making that kind of money. I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not making hiring a nurse away from a full-time job to be my nanny money. Uh, but yeah, she was like super into it. And then we were there for like five minutes and I felt really bad because they, they, they had the guy film and they had him hold and he gave him no hand protection. And I was like, I, that's what he's doing is like a 70 pound bow. It was way too heavy. He had no, normally you don't like, you have something between your hand normally and Normally you do it right. You do it right. Yeah. Normally he would have either for a compound, he'd have a mechanical release at the very least if he was going to draw with his fingers, he would have at least two heavy-duty pieces of leather. At 70 pounds, it could cause easily cause nerve damage um, in the hands long term. So you would have like three or a piece of rubber or silicone or something. And so, yeah. So it, he, and the guy's like, no, 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 I'm fine. And the director was like, how dare you speak to me? And I was like, okay. Well. I mean, he didn't really do that, but that was the energy he was giving off. And I was like, and then we left, and that was the end of that. And then another time we did a Vanity Fair shoot with Lucy Liu, who was just delightful. And it was an Olympic-themed um, spread. So it was like her doing sort of um, Olympics. So she, had, so she was like in a full, like what I would picture a fox hunt outfit, like a big poofy dress. She was gorgeous. And then we handed her an Olympic bow, which was mine and Tara's, but was kind of pieced together. And uh, she literally like walked walked out we like handed their bow we're like okay you put your hand here you move this here you put this here no put your elbow up and then they immediately started filming uh taking pictures of her and then they'd be like okay you have five seconds and we'd be like okay turn your hand this way adjust these fingers and then they take a whole bunch more pictures and then and then the whole thing was done we were there for like six hours and the whole actual filming took like i don't know five minutes it was so fast she was so lovely though and she's like 
as she left, she's like, thank you both so much for your help. You were just delightful. And then she was gone, like a little puff of smoke. And it was really nice. So she's a witch? I mean, I'm just saying she might be magical. That's uh, all I'm saying. So, okay. sorry, not a very interesting story, but there you go. People said they like our stories, and I always feel guilty after I tell them, because I'm like, oh, these are so boring. You remember when I did that, though? We were, we were married. We were together, at least. Yes. Do you have anything to add to that? Have you ever been on TV? A little bit knockout. Okay. Yeah, I also did a, I was also an archery technical advisor or expert or something for some discovery show that I don't think ever made it on the air. He, Shocking. He was like a neuroscientist or something, and he was going to explain different analogies. And so it was something to do with learning, and that when you're engaged in learning, the idea was it's easier to acquire information. So they were going to do this whole example where he shot at a, at a target, and when you're not interested, it was a really small target, and of course he hit everywhere and and missed. And then when you're interested, the target's really be you know huge, and he hit everything. I think was the analogy, but it was one of those things where they're like, okay, we're gonna be there. I think it was at uh, UC Irvine or something at this time, and then I just sat for hours. And I'm like, okay, at this time, I just sat for hours. And then they showed up, and they were like seven hours behind, and they didn't have time to do any filming. And so they filmed him for like two seconds and then, I don't know. Seems professional. Well, it seems to be the way the industry goes. But I mean, I was still paid like 800 bucks. So I was like, oh, I mean, I'll do Hard to not sit there all day and yeah, be okay with that. I'll sit in the car reading my book for six hours to get paid $800. So my point being that this, this thing at the pumpkin patch, I bet you was a, a training kind. And that's why, because they were like, a lot of these kids have never, um, have never carved pumpkins. I'm like, okay, so once again, this, this definitely felt like an episode. I don't fault them for this. Um, Mary's really tough, because she moved a wheelbarrow. You, well, I don't feel, I don't feel guilty, I mean, I don't feel that, okay. They clearly said, what can we do for this season? And they're like, what if the family celebrates Halloween? And they can do Halloween stuff, like you guys can dress up, you guys can carve pumpkins, and they're like, sure. And Cody was the hollow wiener. And then, <laughs> but the, I don't think this is indicative of how they normally do their, their thing, their, uh, their different, their holidays. So they all go from the house to the car, which was like five, ten minutes. It's been five months since the wedding, which means that uh, they, she got married in June and now it's October. Dayton said that they're doing great. Logan said everyone's doing great. They show Dayton holding truly. They show all the kids. They do a lot of kid stuff. So they have the older, the older kids, Aspen, Logan, Maddie, um, a couple of them. Then they sort of had the middle boys, and then they had like the young girls. Do you know what I'm talking about? Unfortunately. So then they had the middle had boys. It. So it was like Dayton, Garrison, uh, uh, Gabe, Peyton, um, were kind of in the middle. I'm not. I didn't. And then up, up at the top, I told you the top, and then the bottom was like Brianna, Aurora. Uh, Gwen, Savannah, and truly, truly did not appear in any of the the interviews. But I, I sort of mixed feelings because my first thought is, oh, I love seeing the kids. I miss, I miss when a huge portion of the interviews were the kids talking about their experiences. I really miss that. The other part of me goes, they weren't being paid for it. <clears throat> I mean, I guess the money was going to their survival, but you know. And I also always kind of have an issue with, like, it does seem to be that kids who are put on TV, like... They it, all turn out well. It's the rule, right? Well, yeah, I mean, like, you look at, like, Kate and 8 plus 8. No, Kate and... Kate and 8 plus... That's 16. <laughs> <laughs> Kate and 8 plus 8. <laughs> um, no, what was his name? I never watched it. But it was the, the, the Kate Gosler had the original, like... Karen. Karen haircut. And, like, her kids did terrible. Her two oldest, especially, like, one of them ended up... I just saw the interview. Their marriage John and Kate. Two, right? Yeah, John and Kate plus eight. There we go. I knew it was Kate. I knew it was eight. But I got a little carried away there. Um, their kids didn't seem to do well. A lot of them don't seem to do well. And so the other part of me goes, it's selfish of me to say that I want more of them. It probably wasn't healthy for them to be on it to begin with. But uh, I do... We, I, we didn't make those decisions, so I don't not. care. So I miss, I miss when we used to see a lot of the kids, because now it feels like you very seldom see the kids, and when you do, it's, uh, I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw Aurora and Brianna or Dayton. COVID. 
We saw them, but did they do interviews? I don't remember if they I did interviews. I don't think so. I, we definitely Maybe. haven't seen Dayton in forever. I respect the kids not, not having to do it, but it just definitely feels like... I feel like it's not the same show if it's just the parents. And, of course, when it's like 90% Robin being like, oh, My family's so been ruined. I've always been a good sister wife, and they're just terrible to me. Let like, me tell you about my great ethics, even though I got knocked up before I was married. Which we do not judge. Oh, I do. On this, well, this person. It, okay, we do not judge the act of whether when you choose to get pregnant. I do judge someone who goes on and on and on about how their ethics are so much better than the rest of the universe, and then th but they make huge exceptions for themselves. Because not only did she get knocked up before marriage with her first husband, she was for sure hooking up with Cody bef bef at the very least before they were married. In our opinion. And also, we're right, and also, we don't care. Yeah, there's no evidence. It, he, a, a married man, if they're going to say... But it's like, but then, after all that, don't be all high and mighty. Oh, we live such good lives, because we're this type of person. Unlike all the Shut other people. Oh. Unlike all these public school kids. Oh, really, how many... Did I tell you about the... We have a, we've become a funny story, because when we lived up north... The school was very, very small. Oh, my small. gosh. It would be a school of, like, a class might be 15. And I don't mean class size. I mean, like, senior The whole year. grade. The whole grade might be 15. And so one year, the... A there, quarter, I think. Was it it a was quarter? a quarter of the girls who graduated were pregnant. Eight. Two out of eight of them. Guess who I don't want to be lectured by for having great morals. Well, the, the thing is, what? I was like, oh, my gosh, that's such a huge percentage. And they're like, yeah, well, I mean, it kind of happens every year. I'm like, every year? I'm like, well, are they addressing this in sex ed? And they're like, no, that's, we don't believe in, it, it should be a parent's thing. I'm like, well, apparently, the parents, I mean, like, I kind of feel like, what are you talking? Like, Leave okay. it to the parents when 25% of your graduating female class is pregnant every year. Maybe, like, some of the older students need to sit down the younger ones and be like, let me just tell you what happens when a man <laughs> and a woman, you know, let me just talk about it and how this is like, I'm like, clearly the parents aren't talking to them. So anyway, but they would, they would be really funny. And I know it wasn't Florida. It wasn't Florida. It's, it was Wyoming. It was Wyoming. But, uh, I mean, that's fine. If, if, I mean, I guess 18 is as good a time as any to get knocked up if that's what you want to do with your life. But it just seemed odd because they were, like, telling us, like, it was a sad story. And then we're like, oh, yeah, but we don't do sex ads. I'm like, well, I mean, I'm no genius here, but it does seem <laughs> like if you don't want your daughter to get pregnant at 18, 17. Let's talk about sex. Baby. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, maybe what you're doing is not the work working. working. I mean, I'm like, should I go talk to someone about so, this? Anyways, back to do as I no. say, not as I do. And I know so many people who talk about the heathenness of leggings, the immorality of girls not wearing, not having, wearing like a sleeveless shirt. And then the same ones will have gotten knocked up first. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just saying maybe this is the place for you to sit down in your glass house. And, and not be throwing stones because, I mean, <laughs> clearly. Anyway, I don't even know how we got on that. Uh, we're just we're just rambling. It doesn't matter. Time. People like us. No, they do not. They do not like us that much. They do not like us this much. So they're going to the, they're, they go out to the park. They have pizza. It's riveting. They eat pizza. They talk about how expensive the pizza is, but it's an easy snack. Then they go to the farm. They show enthralling footage of the kids jumping on a, appears to be a trampoline with hay on top of it. Did you, did you catch that? It was like hay bales around and it looked like it was, must be set into the ground because it looked like it was even with the ground. You know, it's super comfy to lay on. Well, I know. I was kind of like, I guess it's supposed to be like bouncy hay. Um, we took our son one time, some dear friends of, our, of ours before he passed away, owned... Uh, Fuzzy Wigs oh. candy shop where you would like scoop it out. Yes. And they were a major sponsor of an event that we have in the area, which is like the uh, the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown Train Festival. And you get on the train, the local narrow gauge, world famous narrow gauge, and you go up thirty minutes, or, and they have a big turnaround. Or three miles. I, I don't. It's out. It's out of town, but it wasn't that far. 
out of town and then you exit and there's like a big festival of like ha Halloween things. And we went when he was three. Oh, yes. And there was nothing he liked about this. He, nothing. He liked the train. The little other. When it was moving. Yes. And so we get there. He's screaming. He's yelling. He wants no part of it. But our friends, our dear friends had given us these tickets because his, his uh, candy company sponsored it. And so he was like, oh, we're so looking forward. We can't wait to see you there. So we're like, we have to go. But like right off the bat, my son was like, it was just really clear. If you've ever done anything with your child. We, he let us know very clearly he didn't care. He was not a fan. We get into the train. He's screaming. He's yelling. He's grabbing at people around us. The guy in front of us is like. Mm. I'm like, oh, sorry that our child is having a little bit of a problem with the idea of a train. You know, and the lady was, of course, like, honey, don't you worry about it. And the dad's just kind of like. And then the train moves. My son loves it. He loves everything about the train moving. We look out the window. It's great. It's like, oh, praise the Lord. It's finally happening. We get there. We exit. It's got lots of cool stuff. They've got, but you know what? It didn't have a lot of stuff for a three-year-old. So, like, they had the candy corn like pits. anything for a three-year-old. And all the other parents were like, well, you know, I don't know. It was, it was a lot of, like, everyone thought that they were there alone. With their child. Nobody so, wanted to watch their own friggin' kids. So, you know, people are like knocking other people down. If my son was any place for too long, someone would be like, excuse me, can your son move? My child wants to do this. And then I'd be like, okay, let's move him. And he struggles with change. And so then he was like really upset. So we tried the candy corn pit. The bounce house was a death machine. <laughs> it was a disaster. An absolute death machine. Because they had it like one from bounce house. From two to like 12. It's like. Well, no, they had, they had one from like. Zero to six. But guess what a six-year-old and a three-year-old has in common? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so, like, they're, like, projectiles, and they're like, <laughs> And I was like, I... We're not putting our kid in We're that. Like... And then there was, like, a maze. He did not like the maze, and we lost a shoe in the maze. <laughs> so then we had to go find the shoe, and he's screaming. We finally found something he did like. Which was the tractor train? The tractor, like, hay ride. So we'd sit on a bale of hay. And we ended up just doing that, like, seven times. Like, we didn't want to monopolize it. But we would, like, do it, through like, twice if there was no line. And then we'd, like, try to take a break. And then I was, like, we went and said hi to the friend. And he wasn't there. They're, like, oh, does he want candy? Our son doesn't eat candy. We're, like, oh, thank you so much. I'm, like, literally about to cry. <laughs> I'm so upset because there's just not and of course like my son's like i know what i want to do i'd like to run in front of a tractor i'd like to i'd like to hit someone like i'd like to scream and flail my arms and accidentally hit someone where they can act like hot we tried everything there was a pumpkin rolling thing there was then you went to get food and it was like touching the face. leave me be <laughs> It was such a disaster, and but we were trying to be so thankful, and finally we got back on the train, and we got back on the train, and my son is like screaming until it starts moving, and I was just almost in tears, <laughs> and I was are, like, we are, are never doing anything fun again. <laughs> There'll be no more fun in this household. We're not going to fairs. We're not going to parades. We're not going to festivals. Okay, well, fun and parade don't belong in the same sentence. Okay, well, all the, same with all the other stuff. They're not fun either. I'm I'm overstimulated and overwhelmed. My my son is you know, and then he finally like the, the train was moving. We were fine, and then we like f got off the train and went home, and like that was better. But I was like, we are never making friends again. <laughs> That's us do stuff. So that was our experience with one of these. So they go to the, the family thing. They go jump on the trampoline. They pick out pumpkins. I never quite got. They're like, we have thirty pumpkins. I never quite figured out why they had so many pumpkins. Maybe they got extra pumpkins. And then at the end, adorable little Gwen was like, why don't we have 25 pumpkins when we have 21 people in our family? And I'm like, that would be a great question to answer. Now they're going to go, oh, right in the middle of that, they're like, the police came. And they teased us every single commercial break, the whole episode, which was like seven. I don't know how they got so many commercial breaks in. Well, then it was like Cody butt dialed them. But then they're talking about the severity of now, how scared they are of the police. Oh, oh, you used that word. The police? He bum dialed them. Oh, I'm so sorry. He did not butt dial. He bum dialed. They meant that repeatedly. And I was like, is bum that better of a word than butt? Well, they have such superior morals. It must I mean, be. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask a heathen like me if what's a bad word, because I could possibly never know. But, uh... 
yeah, so then they talk about the police quite a bit and how upsetting it is. And they're really, and I didn't realize this next episode after this is about um, him taking Christine to Vegas, which, and, and her kids to show her how great Vegas is. And I'm like, it sounds like... For three days? It sounds like... It's it, it's funny because a lot of people have been comparing the move to Vegas to the move to Flagstaff and how he, like, took the wives individually, sort of, you know, I guess seduced them is the right word. I was, just, I was saying maybe that's not the right word, but it's quite literally the right word. Seduced them into wanting to be on board with this move. Um, in both cases, it moved them, the family, the whole family closer to where Rob, it was a better fit for Robin because Robin's had family in Vegas at the time and then later on had family she had Dayton in, um, in Flagstaff. And soon, more family back in Vegas is my prediction. You think Vegas? Yeah. I think um, I don't really care. a lot of people have been taking pictures of them in like Phoenix and Tulsa. Okay. I could see well, them landing there. Phoenix for us. I could, see, I could see them ending up in Phoenix. It's closer to a lot of the gun stuff that he claims that he's so into. You mean the... No, that he doesn't. He doesn't say he's into gun stuff. You mean the, the outdoor Chinese seem... baloney that he sells? Yeah. So a lot of people we mentioned this before. So they always say that Cody sells guns. As near as I can tell, he doesn't sell guns. He sells gun accessories. And John's seen pictures, and you say it's all like the cheap knockoff stuff that you get on clearance. You can put it on your toy gun and probably be just fine. Put it on a real gun. It's I wouldn't use it. Uh, but he doesn't really sell guns. And a lot of people say, well, there's so much money in guns. Well, there's there's so much money in a lot of things if you're not an idiot. <laughs> if, if, if I'm gonna tell you something about Cody, it's a real problem for him. The kids are so cute. Little Savannah is so adorable. All the kids seem really sweet. And there's this whole big thing about how they're all going out. All the kids seem to be seem like many of the kids didn't know what they were going as or were very like they didn't get costumes for them. Not that they need costumes. I'm not a I'm not a Halloween snob. But, like, one of them's like, I got this mask, and I wore a sweatshirt with it, and someone else is like, I'm a guy, like, you know. Uh, but the nauseating thing, I'll tell you what, if I was not already turned off by polygamy, seeing how cringe they are, because they're like, we're going to be the four elements. Water, fire, wind, and uh, earth. And we're going to make... Uh, Cody the Avatar, and then Robin's like, no, not the Avatar, because the Avatar controls the elements, and no one controls us. And I'm like, well, first of all, let me just take this little clip, and let's talk about what happens in 17 seasons, where Cody's like, I've, we've always signed up for patriarchy. I'm always in control. And then, who was it? Was it Garrison? The, oh. One of the kids comes up. <laughs> Garrison comes up and goes, this is a bunch of sister-wife nerd talk. Best line of the, I mean, the whole entire series. I, I'm convinced that is the best line. The whole series? Bunch of sister-wife nerd talk. And <laughs> st st walks off and they're like, oh, 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 oh. And then they're like, oh, well, we're going to make Cody the son or he's going to be a man because man is not is helpless against the elements. And he is so... He's trying to play it off, but he's so offended by that idea. But I remind you, that was the theme of the whole first seasons, was that he had all these wives, and the, the trade-off seemed to be like, yeah, he got to have sex with everybody. And not do anything and else. Be totally useless, but the trade-off was they got to pretend like they were these independent women. I didn't say pretend. They kind of did their own independent thing, more or less, until Robin came along and sidelined the whole thing into being Robin time the designated the pencil wetter. So then I don't know what they did to Cody. I mean, I didn't think his hair could look worse, but they did something Somehow. to him. Somehow. And then they, like, sprayed him. And I think maybe he was the son. I was confused because I thought he said he was going to be Sammy Hagar for a while because he was talking about getting red hair sprayed. And I was like, is Sammy Hagar redheaded? Like, this, this is a whole hole in my knowledge of Sammy Hagar in there because I don't remember that and then but they go on and on with the family's gelling and all the kids are getting along and everything's going so great and everything's so wonderful and then Robin makes a joke about how Cody's hair is the fifth wife and I'm just like oh. I'm like everything everything they present about polygamy in this episode is like the cringiest ickiest like if you didn't want to barf before, yeah, stay that was, tuned. That was the whole episode. I know if you took out what we talked about our private life, 
you would have five minutes of recap, but I genuinely cannot think of more to say about this episode. They let a kid drive the car. Well, they were they were sixteen. Yeah. I'm still I'm still befuddled by the fact that they have so many cars and two of them are convertibles. It does seem like so. I know a lot of times, you know, whenever it comes up that maybe Mary gets more than her share, she says, "I don't deserve any less because I have." I, I was infertile. And I agree. And as someone who has infertility and has struggled terribly with it, I absolutely agree that the number of children you have is not an indic you know indication of your worth and all that. But I think that there was a certain degree where she played that to get more than her fair share. Like, it seems like if all of the kids have to have a budget, it's not fair that Mary would have her own separate budget where her and her child had a significant amount more spending cash than the other kids. I mean, if they're all family, then the family bills should be family bills. And all of the kids, you know, if all of the kids get two pairs of shoes a year, all of the kids get two pairs of shoes a year. If all of the kids get $100 worth of school budget and, you know, this amount of medical and so on and but so forth. But as we know... That's not how that, that works. That is not how it works. Also, there are 17 kids. Because you cannot count Cody as an adult. What did I... Oh. Oh. Okay. That's our well calling. So we will see you later. Bye.